In this video, we're going to add a voltage cutoff to our existing lithium ion battery model using Stateflow, which is a toolbox in MATLAB similar to Simulink and Simscape. Last time, we set up our battery model with a controlled current source discharging the battery at 2.5 amps. The first thing we'll do is change the end of the simulation time the stop time to be 4,000 seconds and we'll run the model and inspect the voltage versus time curve. It looks similar to what we had last time where the voltage starts about 4.2 volts, decreases as we're discharging the cell and reaches about 2.2 volts around 3,600 seconds. If we look at the state of charge versus time and zoom in, when state of charge reaches zero, meaning the battery is fully discharged, the time is 3600 seconds. So everything appears to be working well, except zooming in on our voltage plot. At 3600 seconds, when the battery voltage reaches somewhere around 2.23 volts, the voltage drops instantly to zero. Now that may be okay in, in most situations. In our situation, we'd like the voltage curve to continue to decrease smoothly towards zero. What's happening in the model is that when the SOC reaches zero, the model automatically defines or overrides the battery voltage, the terminal voltage, and sets it to zero. And we don't want that behavior. We'd like the voltage to continue to decrease as we continue to extract charge from the cell. Now the state of charge is defined between 0 and 100 percent. So this state of charge will continue to stop at 3600 seconds, but if we allow the voltage to continue to drop, we would be able to extract more capacity from the cell, effectively over discharging the cell. The state of charge will remain at 0 because that's the minimum, that's the limit of SOC but we will have extracted more capacity than the rated or nominal capacity. So what we want to do to do that is click on our battery model, right click, find the mask, and click look under mask. Here we see, I'm going to click spacebar to zoom in, this is a high level of our battery model. We see our terminal, positive and minus, terminals and we see our output port M which outputs our signals. You see a, a voltage source, an internal resistance, a current measuring component, a battery temperature which we're not using at this moment, and an underlying model. If we double click on this model component we see an even larger model based in Simulink. These are all Simulink components that are arranged in a way to mimic the behavior of the battery. What we want to do is focus on this part of the model and we're going to make a modification so that when the state of charge reaches zero we don't automatically set our voltage to zero. So I'm going to highlight these few components and drag them to the right. It's going to give me a warning saying you're attempting to modify this file. Disable link to make changes locally. So I'm going to click Disable Link, and I'm going to try this operation again. I can now drag those components to the right. I've made a little bit of room because we're going to add a gain to set this value to be zero. So I click on my library browser, go to the commonly used blocks menu within Simulink, and I'm going to find my gain component and drop it on the model. Set a gain of zero and I'm going to drag it so that it automatically makes a connection within that branch right there. The modification is done. I'm going to go back to the model by using this tree here and clicking on the name of my model. In this case it says MATLAB Video 2. You may want to save your model at this point and name it something else. I'm going to go ahead and run the model and now we're going to inspect our voltage and SOC curves. Now we see the voltage drops smoothly to zero and we'll zoom in to see at what time does it drop to zero. 
it looks like 3670 seconds. And looking at the SOC, zoom out, we still drop from 100 to 0, and I'll zoom in on the time here, and it still reaches 0 SOC at 3600 seconds. So that gives us the behavior that we want. What we're going to do next is we're going to use state flow to add a voltage cutoff. What we would like to do is say, as this cell is discharging, we're going to stop the discharge process when we reach a certain cutoff voltage. We'll use two volts in this case. So instead of continuing to extract charge from the cell, we're going to stop at two volts and we'll let the cell rest by setting the current from negative 2.5 to zero at the moment that we reach two volts. State flow is a library or a toolbox within MATLAB that allows you to change the state of, of your model. So I open the library browser, I find the state flow menu or toolbox, and I'm going to drag a chart component onto my model. I'm going to double click to enter the chart and we want to add two states. The first state we'll call discharge, and the second state we'll call rest. I'm going to click spacebar to zoom in. The blue dot with an arrow indicates the default state. When the model begins, the state of our, of our chart will start in the discharge state. What we're going to do first is create a condition to change from the discharge to the rest state. So if you hover over the boundary of this component, the cursor will change to a, a crosshair and I can drag a line over to my rest state. We're going to select the condition and our condition will be V cutoff less than or equal to 2.0. So when the cutoff voltage Maybe we should call this the terminal voltage. When the terminal voltage becomes less than or equal to 2.0, we'll change from discharge to rest. What we need to do is, within each of our states, we need to create an entry, a statement that we'll execute upon entry. Here, we'll, we'll type the word entry with a semicolon and enter to the next line. And then we'll type I out equals negative 2.5. So in this case, when we enter the discharge state, we'll have an output variable that will set to a value of negative 2.5. And in our rest state, we'll do the same thing, but we'll set the output current equal to zero. The last thing we have to do is define, or we have to tell state flow whether these variables are inputs or outputs. To do that, we go up here to the simulation tab into this prepare part of the menu and click the arrow and find the symbols pane. Within the symbols pane, we now see V term and I out. It already is guessing that I out is going to be an output data. So I'm going to click on this little icon and I am going to select output data. And same thing with V terminal. It's proposing input data, which is what I want. So now the terminal voltage is an input and the current I out is an output. I can now go back to my main model and I now see that I have an in and an out port. The terminal voltage, I'm, I'm going to connect to my voltage output signal. That's just simply measuring the terminal voltage. And my output current is now my signal. I don't need the 2.5 block anymore. I can connect the output signal to my controlled current source. If we run the model, we'll see what happens. It's telling us that we have an algebraic loop. What we have to do to solve this is go to the library, go to the discrete menu within the Simulink toolbox, and we'll, we'll drop the memory component in line with our output signal. We may need to reroute the signal. Okay, it's made the connection. What that's going to do is break the algebraic loop and I'm going to click run one more time. Okay, the model has run and we can inspect our voltage curve. 
you see that it looks a little bit funny at the beginning here. That's because we need to initialize the memory block. Double clicking, we need to set the initial condition to negative 2.5. That will be the current signal at the start of the simulation. When we rerun the model, our voltage curve looks better at the start of the simulation but we notice that we're having a slight overshoot below 2 volts. To fix that, we're going to change the solver settings. If I click on the Modeling tab and Model Settings, I'm going to change the maximum time step size to be 1. This will create a lot of output data, but the solver will be forced to take smaller steps and capture the moment when the voltage drops below 2.0. You may be able to achieve the same thing with different model settings, but this is a way that will certainly work. So now we see the voltage drops from 4.2. As soon as we reach 2 volts, we enter the rest state and the terminal voltage recovers back to the open circuit voltage. If we inspect our current signal, you see that we start at 2.5 amp discharge and switch to 0 amp rest. And if we look at the state of charge, we drop from 100 to 0.